Okay. Yeah, good evening, everyone. My name is Rita. I'm a software um, tester and ISTQB certified. So, our table of content for today is um, what is software testing, types of software with a software tester, software testing skills, importance of software testing, um, software development lifecycle. Level of testing, agile scrum ceremonies, roles and responsibilities of a tester, names of um, roles, tools, and the gains, uh, what you'll be gaining after this um, internship is over and the average salary of a software um, tester. So let's go into it quickly. And um, we start with um, what is software testing? So Software testing encompasses the evaluation of a software system or application to verify and validate. As you can see, I've uh, kind of um, pinpoint verify and validate its, its functionality, behavior, and performance. Another um, definition is um, software testing involves evaluating the functionality of a software program to identify errors and discrepancies, ensuring the application behaves as expected before it is deployed and made accessible to users. So as a, as a software, um, software testing is, um, is mainly um, something we do every day. I mean, um, we are all testers in our day-to-day -day activities. Um, from when we wake up in the morning, stretching, seeing if every part of our body is still intact, things like that, um, before taking a shower, um, trying to uh, mix the hot water and the cold water to get the right uh, temperature that is required. So even cooking and things like that. So that's the, um, that's where, that is exactly what software testing is. For this time around, it 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 involves is a a soft a software. So we are testing that software. We are verifying. We are validating that software, the functionality of that software, the behavior, what we are expecting it to do. That is what software testing is. Um, let's go. Before that, I'll just quickly give us another illustration of uh, software testing. Say, for instance, um, as a as a mother, you want to um, you're about to feed a baby, you know, uh, like a toddler, and you have the food in your hand. One of the things you would do is to make sure maybe the food is hot, is for you to be sure that the food is on the right temperature for the baby. If the food is hot, you have to make keep cool, bring it to like a, a room temperature before you give it to that baby. Imagine if that food is very hot and you give it to that baby, what do you think will happen? So that's what software testing is. So as a software tester, we want to make sure that what we are uh, testing is error, is error free, is bug free before it's being delivered. It's performing as, as, as expected. It's functioning as expected. Because um, say for instance, another analogy I'm gonna use is um, if you're on a McDonald's website and you're trying to order Big Mac, for instance, and then you are getting um, hamburger, that's an error, that's a bug. Because what you want is not hamburger, you want Big Mac. So obviously that, that system is not functioning as expected because your expectation is to get a Big Mac, but rather you are getting uh, a hamburger. So that is what software is uh, uh, essentially. So that's where we testers come in. Uh, as we all know, the, the world is evolving around IT. Everything is going into um, digital technology. Even small businesses, they are all going into digital world. So at, at most of all these softwares needs to be tested. Otherwise, it will lead to... Um, um, issues and all that. We'll go into that as we continue. So there are um, three types of um, software. 
we have the programming software, we have the uh, system software, and we have the application software. So uh, system software is, um, is used for managing hardware. And um, it's just a computer program that is designed to uh, provide a platform for uh, running app, um, application software and to manage um, computer hardware resources. That's what system software is. As you can see on the screen, you have all the um, logos on it. You have the Android, you have the Chrome. So those are examples of which is the operating system, your Windows and all that. Without Windows, you cannot use your computer. You can't use your system. So that's where system software comes in. And then you have the uh, device drivers, which is like your uh, keypads and your mouse and other things. So then you also have the um, firmware, you have the utilities and the rest of them. So that's what system software is. And then we also have the programming software, which is mostly um, uh, used by the developers or done by the developers. So it's, main, it's mo mainly for compiling and um, interpreting and debugging uh, code. So for, for programming, is used by the developers. It's a software application designed um, to assist um, programmers and um, in developing and debugging and managing code. So some of the um, applications on um, program software includes um, like Visual Studio, which is run by Microsoft, where you have the C Sharp and uh, the C++, Java and all the rest, uh, Python and, and the rest of them. You also have the S code, uh, which is an uh, um, IDE, uh, which is also um, by Apple for Mac. Then we also have um, HTML. So most of all these things, um, the developers will execute it before we then get an output. So that's where we, uh, that's where the application software comes in. So for the application software, which is what we, the software testers, uh, work on or what we use is a, a um it's a general um software customer and business um software so we have um no we have three types of um software under application software which is for business we have it for um customized customized uh, software if you want to customize uh, software we also have the general software. So for the general software, that's where the Chrome and the rest of them comes in, Firefox and all the rest of them. Because on that general software, we also have um, the web uh, browser and all the things like that. We have the database, which is for SQL. We have the spreadsheet, which is for Excel. As you can see, the logos are there. So these are all application software. So we test application software. So these are the three types of software system for running your program and um, programmer for um, compiling and debugging and interpreting your code while application is for the users. So this is just to let you know that these are the kind of software, but what we will be working on or what we software testers work on is um, application software. So the programming software is mostly for developers and the system software is entirely different from application software. But on this platform, we work on application software. So which takes us to our next um, question. It says, who is a software tester? A software tester is a professional responsible for evaluating and testing software applications to ensure they meet quality standards and function as intended again. So basically as a software tester, you are meant to go, what sets you apart from everybody that is a tester, like I said, just now that we are all testers in our day-to-day -day activities, is the extra mile we go as a tester, what we have to do to, to, to identify uh, these defects in software applications. So the main objective of the software testing is to identify and report any defects or issues in the software before it is released to end users. So software testers play a pivotal role in the software development lifecycle, collaborating closely with developers, project managers, and other stakeholders to ensure the delivery of high quality software. 
um, there's another definition for a software tester. I mean, this that that might be too wordy, but this is something that can still. I mean, you can take a note. A software tester is a professional accountable, is a professional accountable for assessing and testing software applications to guarantee they adhere to quality standard and operate as intended again. Uh, if you notice the same thing we are saying over and over, but in different form, just for, uh, just for you guys to understand what I'm trying to say is it has to operate as intended. That's, the, that's, that's just the end of it. As long as it's of high quality, what is expected of it is doing it, like as I said, with the analogy of the uh, hamburger and the mac. You, what you want to get from it is as long as it, it is working as expected, that's the end, that, that's the result. That's, that is what we want to achieve as a software tester. So where precision and accuracy is required as a software tester, you have to be accurate. We'll get into that as we, as we move along. And the role of a software tester is optimizing functionality and detecting defects. Because as a software tester, what you are being paid to do is to detect a defect. And there's no way as a software tester that you will not find a defect in a software application. So any software that has gone through a uh, development, we definitely have a bug. It is 100, let me say 99% guaranteed. Even if not too much, but you will definitely find a bug. Why? Because during the uh, initial stage, the developers can make mistakes in their codes. So things like that can definitely lead to us detecting defects in a software application. So um, software testing skills that is expected of you. And again, anyone can be a, uh, a tester. So as, a, as, as, um, as an individual, if you have all these skills, in you with what you will be uh, acquiring in Blue Sky, then you are good to go. So some of the uh, testing skills that is expected of you to have or some of the soft skills that is expected of you to bring in to these internships are um, analytical skills and detail oriented. So for uh, analytic, an, analytical skills, sorry, <laughs> for analytical skills, as a tester, strong analytical skill is required to understand software and um, identify potential issues. So um, as, a, as, a, as a software tester, you must have the, the mindset, like as I said earlier, that you must find a defect. So because of that, you will go extra mile in trying to find that defect. That is what makes us different from other testers. Uh, Juliet, if you want to pause the recording, someone sound is hot. Yes, yeah, you can. Okay, thank you. So I'll take um, analytical skills again. So as a software tester, you should have analytical skills in terms of um, trying to uh, identify potential issues and um, being able to understand software requirements. So um, you you have to you have to have it. Analytical skills is essential when it comes to being a software tester. Um, Secondly, you have to, uh, as well as detail-oriented, sorry, the Zoom was blocking. Oh, I didn't see that. I'll just move my Zoom. So yeah, uh, quickly going to detail-oriented. You must have a keen eye for detail as well as a software tester, which is where, what sets us apart from um, being uh, a tester. Because uh, like someone was saying to me that he's a food tester. Basically, food tester, he goes out to, because he works in a restaurant, he goes out to test food, but that's different. Uh, we we are software testers. What we have to do is to have keen eye for details. Uh, we are always looking for something. That's the truth. As a tester, you will be there looking for something. You have to find that bug. That's what you've been paid to do. I say to people because in a situation whereby you are being hired and you don't raise a bug, that means you are not needed because you are there to test it, to say, okay, this is what I find. And um, that's what gives you joy as a software tester when you find a bug. And um, you don't fix it anyway, the de developers that fix the bugs, but yours is just to find these uh, bugs or defects. 
before uh, software uh, is being released. So and um, you have to have uh, uh, be able to analyze um, software behavior as well and um, ensure uh, um, thorough test coverage as a um, detailed oriented person as a software tester. Then number two is um, adapt adaptability and um, curiosity. So you must be adapting to adjust to test plan because sometimes in a situation whereby the project is already on and uh, along the line, the requirement is being changed or your uh, user story is being updated. You just have to change your test cases. You just have to uh, maybe change your test plan, you know. So as a tester, you have to be adapt ad adaptable. And um, curiosity is also another thing as a software tester. So basically we say, People that are curious are number one people to be software tester. Why? Because as a software people, those days when you have people that they will carry anything that is electronic, they'll break it. And then when you ask them why, they'll tell you, oh, I want to know why he's making that sound. Oh, I want to know why it's like this. So people like that are people that are kind of curious, curious minded people, people that wants to know why. As a software tester, you should have that kind of mindset. You have to uh, you have to be curious um, and uh, ask questions as well. You have to be, uh, um, you have to go through self-development, which is, as a software tester, you will always want to develop yourself because once you have that curiosity, uh, say for instance, you're working on a framework, you want to even know, like what, what I would also say to you people is, after this session, try and do um, some, um, research on your own you know so those are part of you being curious you want to know why it's like the question um sorry i have forgotten your name that asked earlier he's already curious which is the a game is good it's good to have that mindset you ask questions once you are not clear as a as a software tester ask questions because that is what will help you arrive at your destination and um the third one Okay, now my Zoom has hung. I thought I'll send this slide to Laomi. Uh, can you pause it, please? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Number three, please. We have communication skills. Um. So as a software tester, this is an essential skill for you to have, um, both verbal and non-verbal, in terms of um, because you'll be you'll be co um, communicating with other team members, especially with your developers. So effective communication skill is highly essential. Um, you should be able to collaborate well with other team members as a software tester. And um, next one, please. Technical competence. Um, as a software tester, so essentially you need to be technical, um, even to the uh, lowest part of it, even as a manual tester, um, you should be able to operate the, for instance, in Blue Sky, we use Azure Board for um, designing our test cases as a manual tester. So you should be able to use that effectively and, um, yeah, so there are other technical skills you can also acquire in terms of automation as well. Um, so like as I said, even to the lowest part as a manual tester, it is highly uh, essential for you to have a technical skill. It is required. Um, next one, please. So now the fifth one is um, problem solving skills. So as a um, software tester, you must have you you must you must be capable um of diagnosing issues let me put it that way yes you should be like in terms of um detecting a, a bug so essentially you should be able to um diagnose issues and um find the root cause of um uh, defect so i'm going to say say for instance even as a software tester when you find a bug um maybe we are executing uh, your test case, let, let me just use manual now. You're performing the manual testing and um, you, you, your environment is on Chrome. 
and you you find a bug, it is essential for you to um, carry out that execution on another browser like Edge or Firefox. That is when you can then say, yes, this is a bug. Because sometimes if you, if you rely on one um, browser and um, in a situation whereby you've um, reported this bug and then your maybe your test lead now takes try to replicate this same defect to see if it will replicate in a on our own system and find out that it's not exactly what you have reported then that is an error so when you find a defect or a bug uh, on a software you have to be thorough about it you have to do it over and over and another skill you need to have is um you have to be able to think out of the box which is um you have to be able to think out of the box which is um you have to be able to assess uh software functionality you have to come with innovative skills as well you have to be good you have to be creative you have to have time management skill as well amongst other skills that is required of you as a software tester so we'll move quickly to the next slide thank you Juliet. so i'm just going to go on an uh, overview of um software um importance of software testing so software as a software tester, it is essential for us to carry out testing because of financial losses, um, trust losses, user satisfaction, and um, quality assurance and risk mitigation. So, because there could be errors or bugs in software. So it is, it is essential for us to identify it early because if not, we'll end up spending more in terms of Imagine you finish uh, um, carrying out a test and um, the software is being delivered and say, oh, we've done everything. And then they come bring it back. That's a whole lot of loss of finances because you then have to start all over again. So that is why, especially in, in Blue Sky, we kind of observe shift left testing, which is like agile principle where we at each phase we carry out testing. So that is essentially one of the importance of um, Agile because it saves cost and trust losses. Uh, like as I said, with the analogy of uh, McDonald's, if you know that their website is not as effective as it should be, you will lose trust, you know. And then we want user satisfaction whenever we are operating on any um, software application. You want to be able to navigate. Say you are on Amazon, you want to click on something and you should be able to make payment so things like that so we 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 tr we trust that website that oh when i go there I, i'll be able to uh, purchase whatever i want to purchase and be able to pay and not get overcharged things like that and quality assurance as well as a uh, risk mitigation so um importance of software it ensures reliability it ensures security and it ensures um, performance as well so it saves costs and um, it's easy to fix um, errors once it comes before delivery is done. Next, please. So uh, what is software development lifecycle, which is LDLC? It's a system, uh, systematic approach for um, planning and um, create, creating, testing, deploying, and maintaining, and um, Maintaining software, yes, yeah. it's five, yes. Planning, creating, testing, deploying, and maintaining software. Why do we test, uh, why software development lifecycle, why is software development, sorry, lifecycle important? It's supposed to be live there. So it ensures a structured and organized approach to software development. Um, we, it, in the course of the training, um, the tutor will go deep on, um, SDLC, so you get to know more about SDLC. This is just an overview. So it also helps us to manage resources efficiently and it reduces development time as well and also minimize the risk of um, project failure. If you move to the next slide quickly, thank you. And we have levels of testing. So these are the levels of testing. Unit testing, which is you test individual components. This is among other testing. We have different types of testing and unit testing folks on that white box testing. We have integration testing. Unit testing is done by the developer, which is the early stage of 
the um, project itself or for the um, the software life cycle. This is the uh, first step of testing that is being carried out. Okay, I'll try and slow down, sorry. It's because of our time. So like as I said, I'll repeat myself. We have um, levels of testing, which is unit testing, integration testing, system testing, user acceptance testing. So unit testing, as I said, you test individual components. You test like the unit, the modules, which is like the method, the class, the driver. And these are done by the developers, the unit testing. You also have the integration testing, which is unit test is the first phase. You don't have the integration testing. So the integration testing is also done by the developers. So the unit testing, they've, te they've tested individually. They will then test it integratedly. That's the, you bring them together and test and see if you put the modules and the component or the unit together, how it will react. Will it work as expected? That is integration testing. So these two kind of tests, these two types of tests, unit test and unit testing and integration testing is done by the developers. And this falls under white box testing. Then system testing, this is where we come in. We test the entire system. This is where we test the functionalities, the performance of the software. This is done by the testers. Then we have the user acceptance testing. So these four phases, what you you uh, that goes on in Agile. The user acceptance test is the final stage, which is done by the uh, users. And under user acceptance testing, we also have two types of testing. And then, um, mind you, let me go back quickly. System testing is under black box testing. You can highlight, you can uh, write that down. Unit testing and integration testing is white is under white box testing because you can't see it. But system testing is done by the um is under system testing is done by the software testers and that comes under black box testing. Then you have user acceptance testing, which is the final stage of it, which is under this, you also have two types of testing, the alpha and the beta testing, which is done by the end users. So this is when they test the entire software to see if it's working as expected. So after we've carried out the test, after we've done everything, then this is when the end users will then test it to see if it's working as expected. Next slide, please. Then we have the Agile Scrum um, ceremonies. So sprint planning is part of it. So this is what we'll be doing uh, during your internship, you will have a sprint planning. So sprint, um, as testers in Agile, we observe sprint planning, which initiates the strong, um, the which initiates the, the sprint by laying out the work to be performed during sprint. So during sprint planning, it involves um, the, what's it called? Uh, business analysts, the scrum masters, and the testers and the developers will then come together. It's when sometimes you have requirements, we will go through the requirement. We, we, this is when we commit the amount of um, PBIs that we want in, in that sprint. Say, for, in, for instance, we are in sprint one, we might be committing less um, PBIs, less product uh, backlog items, or less tasks. So during sprint planning, that is when you read your user stories. Uh, I think um, there will be um, that will be. Uh, I think uh, it will be demoed to you guys how it is done, how I just uh, how uh, Scrum ceremony is done, and then estimation also takes place during sprint planning. Then number two is fine. It's fine. Number two is a daily uh, uh, stand up, which is a uh, DSU. This is a. Um, um, to inspect the progress towards the sprint goal. Um, you give daily updates uh, if there's any issues or any impediment. And uh, this is mostly facilitated by the Scrum Masters as well. And the third one, please. So sprint review, which is the purpose of the sprint review. The purpose of the sprint review is to inspect the uh, outcome of the sprint and determine the future 
adaptations. So basically, this is when you review um, most of um, the tax, uh, the PBIs that you have. And um, in sprint review, sometimes presentation goes on, whereby the stakeholders will come and then uh, you showcase what you've done, you demo what you've done for the last sprint or for the previous or maybe a couple of sprints that's, that's passed. So wherever you are, you kind of demo it to the stakeholder if it's going in, in the right direction, if it aligns with the requirement and things like that. So that's sprint review for you. And the next one, please. So sprint retrospective. Um, the purpose of sprint uh, res uh, retrospective is to plan for ways to increase, um, let me say, quality and um, effectiveness. That's the purpose of sp uh, sprint retrospective. So that's when sometimes we come and talk about um, what went wrong, uh, what didn't go well, and things like that, where we need to um, um, kind of improve and uh, anything that needs changes in, during the sprint, uh, you know, things that didn't go well in the previous spring, we talk about it or in the present spring, that's where you do uh, ret retrospective. And then the last one, please, which is your backlog refinement. Uh, this is the act of um, breaking down or the process of breaking down um, and uh, further defining your product, your product backlog um, items. So maybe into smaller um, sizes or chunks and things like that, that's for backlog refinement. So these are five um, Agile Scrum ceremonies that we do observe during um, Sprint in Agile. So we then have here the roles and responsibilities of a software tester. So as a software tester, you execute your test cases. So after writing your test cases, after designing your test cases, you will then execute it either manually or through automation. And then secondly, we have um, estimation, review and validate your user story. So this, this act is mostly done during sprint planning. Like as I said earlier, you do estimation during your sprint planning and you review the user story, you validate it. This is when you ask questions. When the BAs have written user stories, you see if it aligns. This is where you, your analytical skills also comes in. You understand? This is where you also think out of the box. This is where you also ask questions. This is where you get curious because sometimes the BAs just write the stories that doesn't align with what we use, uh, we testers think. So sometimes you can challenge them as well as the developers. If you think it's not right, this is when you, you speak up. This is when you ask questions. You make sure it aligns with the requirement, with what is expected. And um, designing test cases. So some people will say writing, but professionally, you use the word designing. So designing test cases like uh, it's a situation whereby you have your user story, you use the BDD format, giving when then, or things like that. So um, all this will be taught during the course of the internship. Then identify and report your defect. Like as we were saying, once you find a defect, you have to report it. We testers don't fix the defect. That's good news, isn't it? So we identify it, we figure it out, we find it, and then we report it clear and concise um, steps to reproduce for the developer. You assign it. All this will be taught how to um, create your defect reports and things like that. Then creating software documentation, e.g. test plan. Yes, you'll be required to create a test plan because as a, soft, as a software tester, you should be able to create a, a test plan. And what is a test plan? Is the overview of your objective, the scopes and the um, schedules of your project, everything that is required, your testing environment. So you put it into, um, um, like structure it. Um, sometimes most companies, when they employ you, you have to create one. So it is good as a, so as a software tester to know how to write a test plan, which you'll be taught anyway. Most times it's given to you as an assignment. And I can challenge you tonight that you can go and start, um, um, what's it called now? 
um, doing your research on test plan, how to write. I mean, different companies, different organizations write it in different ways, but it doesn't matter if you can just get one of the simplest ways to write a test plan, it will help you in the course of your internship. And collaborate with developers, very, very essential. You have to be in good terms with your developers, very, very essential. So that's, these are some of the roles and responsibilities of a software tester. Essentially, this is what you will be doing. I mean, as a software tester. Next slide, please. So I just felt, um, I know we don't have enough time, but I'll just quickly go through this. Names of software tester, as a software tester, trust me, the names are so sweet. Imagine you are introducing yourself, say I'm a QA tester, or I'm a test analyst. I'm a software test engineer. I'm a software engineer. I'm an automation engineer. I'm a manual tester. I'm a test engineer. I'm a QA engineer. I'm a test manager. I'm a test lead. I'm a software system engineer. I mean, different. The thing is, the names are different, but the roles are the same. It's the same thing you'll be doing, regardless of the names. Apart from manual tester, you might not be doing automation. So things like that. That's the only difference. So if you are a manual tester, some manual tester uh, roles, they still give them, um, you could be QA tester, you could be test analyst. Some, I've seen some, they will say manual tester, but then the job description have automation in it. You, you But the automation might not be um, automation, automation. It might be API testing, you know. So there are different ways because most manual testers do API um, testing now. So yeah. So which is still part of um, kind of automation. But then it now also depends because in API testing, we have the manual API testing and the automation uh, API testing. So if you're a manual tester, you could be doing API, but it's also manual. So yeah. So the names are so lovely. And uh, yeah, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. So tools that are used by software testers, you have the Excel. For writing your uh, manual test cases and some companies still use excel and uh, you'll be taught but here we use azure DevOps. you first of all start by using excel but uh, most companies are moving away from there to uh, azure devops and um, jira with jira i think you have to add an extension to use it to write your test case i'm not so sure but i think so and then confluence then c sharp uh, which is the automation and then you have Java. Uh, you guys will be doing um, C Sharp in this um, internship. I think the last cohort did um, Java. So you guys will be working on C Sharp, uh, which is pretty much easier compared to Java. Even the installation is easier compared to Java. So yeah, grab it, do your research. It will set you apart. It will, to, it will help you go further, like, be able to meet up because sometimes that's what happens. People don't meet up. And then uh, I'll try and say, you guys should try and attend training, not rely on videos because once you attend training, it helps you rather than when you say you have videos and these videos keep piling up. That's the truth. Uh, I'm speaking from experience. Then you also have SQL, which is the SQL. So as a software tester, you are required to have that skill and API and um, Playwright and Cypress. Playwright and Cypress are automation um, tools as well for software testing. Next slide, please. So what you will gain at the end of this internship, requirement analysis, uh, whereby uh, you'll be able to, like as I say, challenge the BAs, challenge the developer, not fighting them, don't get me wrong. What I'm trying to say is once the user story, because you are using uh, your analy analytical skills, because you are thinking out of the box. So you'll be able to like, okay, the way this story is, is not clear. It's not this. I'm expecting it to be this way, things like that. So you'll be able to analyze requirements. And then uh, test planning. That's supposed to be test plan. Sorry about that. Okay, test planning, yeah. And then test case design, which is how to write your test case um, in the BDD format or, yeah or your test script, which is automation. So test case is a manual, while test script is automation. But it's the same process, but you're using BDD format once it comes to test scripts. But you can also 
write your test case on Excel without using BDD format. But I like using BDD format, which is the given when then, and you'll be taught because it makes your um your 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 test case readable and very clear. Then we also have the, you'll be taught how to set up your uh, testing environment. You also be taught how to execute your test cases, both manually and automation. And then you also be taught how to uh, find defects as well as reporting it. And um, automation testing is also there. Then collaboration, you learn it here, how to collaborate with all that team members because you could, we could be working in cross-functional teams, you know, when you get employed out there. So you learn how to collaborate. You meet people of different characters. You just have to adapt because this is what happened in the life. Because this internship is a work placement. It's exactly how it is. There's no different. That's the truth. So wherever you get here, try and hold it well because you have to replicate it when you get out there. So that is why we try to go overboard, try to let people understand this process because you will be utilizing it out there. Um, documentation, you'll learn how to do that. Professionalism, you'll learn that here. And we also offer, oh, yeah, Blue Sky also offer CV review towards the end of your internship, how to write test plan, how to do estimation. And then if you, you, you also get the opportunity to get admitted into the advanced class where you even learn more and you continue to work on life projects. So that's the good thing about Blue Sky. You work on life projects, you work on greenfield applications. So greenfield applications means you're starting the project from the scratch, you get to do that. So you start everything from the scratch with the developers and the BAs. Next slide please, I think that's it. Chile. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, press it one more time. I think you know, the, the title will come up. Yes. The average salary expectation, quickly. So this is just, um, I got this today, but it varies, to be honest. So this is the average salary for ASA today in United Kingdom of a software tester. Ranking from 37K to 63K. So that 37K, we are looking at somebody that is a manual tester. But once you an automation tester, the minimum is 45 to 50. So, and it goes up from there. Um, somebody that I know, I think he will be coming in to testify to tell you guys about his success story when he gets the chance to. If I'm allowed to say it, he got his, his, his salary is over 60,000. Yeah. So, and that's his first job as a software tester. So you can do it. You can get 80, you can get 70, as long as you have the confidence and bring out your A game. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, everyone. I've, I hope I've been able to impact somebody with today's class, the introduction. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Risa. Thank you, Risa. Thank you for, for pressing you. through. <laughs> and for um, delivering an amazing intro session. So it's now question time. I know we're out of time, but hopefully we wouldn't mind spending another five, 10 minutes just to um, take some questions. So if you have questions, please raise your hands and then we'll call your names um, as we go. Uh, I can't see the order in which the names, I'll just call out as I see it. So Olu Fumilola, you have your hand up, please go ahead. All right. Um... There was a time I used to work at a bank and there's this application we use called um, Basis. So it got to a point that this application is always giving us issues. So, so the bank thought it was the um, software engineers that were not good enough or stuff like that. So they brought a new set of software engineers. So uh, let's say the previous um, engineers did like, let's say the method they used was two plus two equals to four. You understand? So instead of them, the new ones, looking at why the 2 plus 2 is not giving us the 4 it's supposed to give us, they will bring in a new method, let's say like 3 plus 1 equals to 4. So this 3 plus 1 method they are now using becomes even more difficult than the first one. Now we, we, we tend to get more issues than the first method. So my question is, 
why is it that um software engineers they try to maybe they do that because they want to make their own impact or they want the bank to see that oh we too, we are bringing out bringing in our own idea we are bringing in this just for them to see that they are working why don't they just look at uh, like what we um, Rita said look at where the issue is test it and see where the bug is and just solve it instead of starting a new set of yeah that we have to now start training again it's time wasting it money wasting and you know it's exhausting then it was really really exhausting so i don't know where the issue is i don't know what you would advise they would have done or i don't just know i'm just i just want the to advise. get some clarification <laughs> yeah i kind of like your short story the advice would have been get a better tester so uh, you also said maybe the the previous are they testers or developers? That's what I'm not sure of. So if an application is not working as expected, the first thing you have to do is inspect it, thereby carrying out a test. You know. So if you carry out an effective test, you definitely find the issues. Why? Because there's something you are expecting. So I know I didn't go into in depth. You will get all this in testing. We have what is called actual and expected. Actual means what you are saying. Expected is what you are expected to get. So, like I said, let me use um the uh, analogy again of the McDonald. You were expecting Big Mac, but you got. So it didn't mean that it didn't go through. It went through, but this is what I got. But that's not what I want. What I want is this, but you are not getting it. You understand? So. I don't know what could have transpired there if maybe they didn't have a proper tester or if they, they, they had the wrong application and tried to carry out a different thing on it. So what I would have advised was to get a proper tester to test the root cause of why what is expected is not coming up rather than getting something. Does that answer your question? I, th I think so. I think so. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Miracle, you have a question? Please go ahead. Yeah, I have a series of questions. So I don't <laughs> know if I finish it today. But... <laughs> no, let's try and keep it to um, one or two, just because of time, so that we can take other people's questions. Like Rita oh. said, there will be plenty of opportunity to ask questions. Please, we can keep it to one or two. That would be great. What Thanks. I did today, sorry to cut you, Angela. <laughs> what yeah. I did today is just an overview. So like the yes. SDLC, for instance, is a whole session. The defect, how to get, how to raise a bug, how to report it is a whole session. There are different types of testing. I just gave you levels of testing, which is just what we've done, but there are other testing. There's non, uh, non-functional and functional testing. There's performance testing, though we are not doing all that, but these are things you need to know anyway. Under performance testing, there are different kinds of testing. There's also sanity and smoke testing. So all these things, there are seven uh, principles of testing. So you'll be taught all this, you know. Oh, but go yes. ahead and ask your question. And let, let me just ask the top two, since I've limited to two questions. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I, some years ago, I did a course on uh, quality control. And they were trying to explain to us that uh, quality assurance is monitoring the process and quality control is, is uh, analyzing it after the work has been done. And I don't know if this software testing, because what you explain, I don't know if it's more of a quality control or small, of more of a quality assurance stuff, because I didn't see any one of a, a monitoring the process of the, of the project or the software or something. So um software um quality assurance or um quality control rather is different, entirely different, even if you Google it now, um say you are looking for a job, it's different. So when you put quality control is entirely different from um quality uh assurance or tester. So um as a what you said we didn't you you didn't get anything that looks like I'm monit you I'm monitoring the project or what did you say? Sorry. Yeah, because what what I understand what you explain is after the the software has been developed, it's been given to the tester. 
Okay, so, so let me let me stop you there. So if you remember, I showed you um an uh, image saying levels of testing, which is the unit testing. We also have static testing, which is the documentation. You you go through it, you analyze it, you do a walkthrough. Then you don't have anything to test yet. Yeah? yeah? But you will analyze the document. You will analyze the requirement. If you remember, so testing starts from the very beginning. You don't wait until everything is done before you test. If you remember, I also talked about the unit testing, which is the development. They will do unit testing. These are the, 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 the components that is for that software that you will end up testing. But even at each phase, but wait, that's unit test you said is strictly for a developer, not the Yes, software. that's what I'm trying to say. So before software can get to the software, it, it goes through development stage. So from that process, from the beginning of it, right from the requirement, the static testing is done. So it's being monitored. Okay. Like I said, okay. there are different types of testing, but we don't do all. So static testing is done. Unit testing is done. There's static testing and dynamic testing. If you look at it, static testing is when you test a document, right? Dynamic is when you test the software itself, software. the system. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's being monitored at every stage from the pro, from the point where requirements, where you have your uh, uh, specification requirement document, testing is being carried out up to when developers start putting the units, the components, the modules together. They have to test it individually, like as I said, up to when it's been integrated, they have to test it. So as every phase testing is being done, then once they start, um, the software is getting ready, that you will see from here, gradually, the, oh. your first sprint, you will do testing as, as small as it is, no matter the amount of um, PBIs that is being committed, you have to test it. You have to test it, even if it's manually. So yeah. Um, that's what I meant by testing. We don't use the word monitor. Okay. Okay. The second one, I don't know if you could show more light. In this day, uh, under the importance of software testing, I don't know if you, show, if you should show more light on this uh, risk mitigation. So the risk mitigation covers um, things like um, if the software is not properly tested, like the kind of question um, the other guy asked. Sorry. Yeah. So you want to avoid risk because once there's a risk, it's it's a big problem. I think uh, was it uh, Nissan? Nissan suffered um record almost a million um ten was it a million or a billion cars, you know, due to um um what is it called again? Sensory something yeah. because the hair bag was faulty, things like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah um th that's a risk. And some people that like Nissan, things like that can end up, you no. Know, and in a case whereby something has already happened to somebody before they recall it, what do you think will happen in, in such cases? You know, so that's, uh, don't worry, you get to do more on it. You, there's a lot. To... Can I just add just one? It's just a statement for me, not just, not this thing. On that is a, what is a software development life cycle? Is that planning, creating, testing, developing? What is the last one, sorry? Maintenance, deploying, okay. not developing, deploying. No, deploying, then what is the last one? Maintenance. Maintenance, thank you. Like as I said, please no do problem. your research tonight. I'm challenging you. And then, um, because once you do that, you even have more questions during the course of the um, teaching, uh, during the classes. So do your research, like these three questions you've asked me now, write them down on your own, do your own research and see what you come out of. Um, bring out from it, brother, yeah. Thank you. That's all right. Okay, all right, Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, Olufum Lola, um, I, I think you've asked your question. Can you please put your hand down, just so we know who we yes, have left. Um, so I think, hi, allow me. Sorry, this will be very brief. It will just be like a statement at the end of the day, just to add, because I don't want the equality part to move over before I add what I want to add. Okay. So it will just be a very brief statement, which is just, just think of it. I always tell people that when it comes to, 
when it comes to testing Agile, Scrum as a whole, and all that, always try to, there's a way they've done it that the words actually di will make you digest the meaning of what you're trying to understand. So I just want to let you know that as a tester or as part of the developers, right, that's developers, testers, VAs, everything, for you to finish off a product, right, onus is on you to ensure quality. So that's the aspect of quality that a tester is going to be doing, right? Onus is on you to ensure. So what is quality? When you think of what quality is, to ensure that whatever you're doing, the product that you want to release or any application is up to standard. So onus is on you to ensure it happens. So when a developer, you know, develops, you need to have that keen eye for detail to be able to ensure that what we want to deploy you, it makes sense. It is up to standard. It is user friendly. There is no bug or any unnecessary thing that will um, even embarrass the company that even employed you. So that's the quality aspect. That's the quality check you will be doing as a tester, ensuring that everything. You are the one that has to sniff it out, right? You are the, you are the, so that's why testers, your job is actually very, very sensitive. If anything goes on, on that product and they release it and it's wrong, it's you, it's on you. Don't get me wrong. We, uh, Agile will say, okay, it's on the team. It's da, 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 da. But you think about it properly. That means you probably didn't catch it. Don't get me wrong. It's also not like anybody's emotion to catch it all, right? But you have to do your best to ensure that what we want to deploy is of quality, is of standard. It's not um, something that will make the company lose their reputation. So always be careful as a tester. You need that keen eye for detail. You don't have to be fearful. Then also make sure you document everything you're testing so that you can always have a backup that, oh, you've done it, you've done this, you've done that. So I just wanted to add that so that we don't lose that side of quality. Quality is very, very important for you as a tester. All righty, thank you. My statement took more than one minute. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you, Olaomi. Um, hope that covers the question. Um, Ade Yinka, please go ahead. So from now, I think we'll limit it to one question. Um, Miracle has enjoyed the grace of two questions, but now we'll go to one question just so that we can wrap up in good time and we can have a good night. Okay, Ade Yinka, please go. Very quickly, uh, please. Yesterday, when I entered the Zoom meeting, I see that it has, um, it has finished and... Uh, there is no notification in here. Then, so, because yesterday the topic was, I think, is business analysis. So, I couldn't get what you guys discussed here. So, and I know that there is always recording in progress here. Can I have the, maybe, send, uh, send a link of what is done yesterday so that I make you can go through all what you have been taught and have any, if I see any question I want to ask you. I can compile it together and bring it to the example. Okay. Uh thank you, Alinka. Are you um have you registered for the program? Ah no 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 no. Oh, you haven't. Okay, because yeah. the, the, the link is the link that was sorry? I will need the link to register for. Okay. I think all the links for registration have already been are you on any of the telegram groups, the IT hmm. The general telegram group? No, no, I'm not there. You're not? Okay. Uh, and then it will, be, it will be quite tricky to then send the links to you because the links are usually sent on the telegram groups. So mm -hmm. but can can I, how, how do I capture you? No, she doesn't have it. How, how did you join? How did you yeah. join? How did you, yeah, about the program. Someone and, sent you the link. Okay, so on that, can you join from that link? No, no the link would just be the Zoom link. So to yeah. join, the first thing would be to join the general Telegram group. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can send it on the. I I can try and send it on the on the chat on the Zoom chat right now. Um, okay. I'll try. So if you join the Telegram, the general Telegram group for it's called IT Empowerment. So for the okay. next couple of weeks, the introductory session will be, the invite for the session will be posted on there. But after the, I think the 25th of May, the it will become a closed session such that only those that have registered will be able to join the calls. So if you're still planning to register, you've got a couple of weeks to do so. 
But up mm-hmm. until then, there's still grace to join the calls, you know, listening, get yeah, a, a feel of the roles that are being covered. So you all the links for the meeting with the calls will be sent on the, the general telegram group, which you would need to join to get access to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I will try and put the link for that on the Zoom call just now, um, just as we carry on. If that's all right. So if you join that group, then you'll be able to get access to at least the invitation to join the course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Timmy, software, please go ahead. I think I can put your hands down. If that's all right. Thank you. Go ahead, Timmy, software. Please let's try and um wrap it up quickly because of time. Please go ahead. Um, the question is um on the class going forward. Um, we will be having access to recordings after the class is done. And also, I almost missed this class tonight because I, I didn't know it was happening until I go. Okay. Are you, are you in a similar um, boat? Are you <laughs> on any of the Telegram I'm, groups at all? Yes, I'm on the software testing Telegram group. Oh, so you've registered as an intern? Yes, I have registered. Are you? Uh, did you join the Telegram group called April Twenty Twenty Four Blue Sky Prep Major? Because that is where all the links and the videos are being sent at the moment. So if you're not there, that means you haven't joined all the groups you're required to join. Can I ask how many Telegram groups did you join after registering? I I got a number of Telegram groups. I think I joined two. I would. Confirm. Yeah, so you're supposed to join three at the minimum. So you're supposed to join the, did you join the IT empowerment one? Um, I would, I'm, I don't, I'm not on that. Okay, so you're only on the quality assurance guild. Yes, I am. So that's the first for You said you joined two, what's the second one? The general, I think there's a general... Yeah, so that's the IT empowerment. I'm, that's the one I'm calling IT empowerment. Okay, that's that's my. I will make sure to confirm. And... Okay, if you could please um, so I I don't if I can try. Can you send if you put your Telegram ID? I can try and reach out to you to confirm um what groups you're in. You can send me a direct message on the Zoom just now, and I'll catch. I'll try and um catch up with you if that's all right. Um, okay. Yeah, if you just send me your telegram handle so I can find you on the the general group and I'll, I'll we'll pick this up offline if that's okay. Okay. All right, okay. Um who else has their handle? KG, you have your Hi. handle. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hiya. Um yeah, I'll just make it quick. Um my question was actually in the group chat. Are all levels of testing carried out um only in the project testing phase? I think that was one of my questions. Uh, uh, and I know you said one question, but I had two other questions. It's it's just a follow on. Um uh, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So um, your question. Yeah. Sorry? No, we'll, the question we'll, is, um, are all levels of testing carried out in the project? Is that what you asked? Yeah, no, no. The question is on the chat. It says, are all levels of testing carried out only in the project testing phase? So it depends on the phase. Um, if it's um, at the early stage of the project, like as I said, um, static testing will be done and um, unit testing will be done as well. But that will be done by the developers and um, static testing uh, will be done by developers as well as the testers. So this is when you um, test the document by doing going uh, work through. Um, there are different phases to static testing, um, doing like a walkthrough inspection, Basically, it's just um going through the requirements, going through the documentation, and reviewing it, things like that. And then, as you progress further, um, you then get to do um system testing, like the levels of testing. But then, 
like as I said, depending on the phase. So, but at each sprint, testing will be done. So from the beginning, uh, say sprint one, um, whatever product, um, um, what is it called, task that has been um, committed into sprint, and uh, testers will have to allocate it to them, assign it to themselves, and then carry out testing on it manually. Um, yeah, so at every um, phase of the project, testing is being done either by the developers or by the testers. Okay. And and is, is test test strategy, is that the same thing as a test plan? No. So the test strategy covers the, so that would be your assignment anyway, but then it covers the whole project. Why oh, test? Okay. Yeah, it's just, well, yeah, you can, it's something you need to uh, do a research on as well, because you guys will be giving, uh, you, uh, Mr. Deji, we definitely ask you guys to create a test plan. And sometimes it will tell you, create a test strategy, but most cases you okay. will, guys will be creating a test plan. Okay. Um. Thank you very much. My last question. Sorry, I'm so sorry. The, you said you're you've got the I the certification. Do we are we provided with the certification through the True Blue Sky, or do we have no. to do that by ourselves separately? Yeah, you have to do it yourself. Um, get registered and try and get um the dom for it, and then yeah. So basically, um. Your manual testing will also help you for certification. So whenever your manual testing class is going on, because it covers most things on the um, ISTQB test. So do always jot things down, take notes and things like that, because it will definitely help you to cover your ISTQB test. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, allow me, you have your hand up. Hi, KG. Thank you, um, Rita, for the response. So really, you're going to do it yourself, right? But I just wanted to add that mm -hmm. um, usually we also try to help you get a discounted rate. So okay. maybe later towards the internship, we will also share that link for you to be able to get a discounted rate for you to do those exams. But okay. it's still on, right? So instead of you paying a 600 or a 500 or whatever, we will reduce it to like... That's that's because we have we are affiliated with... um some of these um, um, certifications. So okay. if it's available, we'll definitely let you know. That was one. And then uh, I wanted to say something about your first question. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to add to what Rita said to us regards your first question. So um, even if something has been released and is already in use and an improvement is done on it and all that, you can still test. So testing is like continuous. Mm -hmm. Even the McDonald's website she has used, for example, for example, they will still keep doing testing on it. It's just that it will not now be the baby, right? It will just be that, okay, maybe they made an improvement, blah, blah, blah. a developer developed something. So they will now say, okay, a tester, please check it out. Be sure it's working well. So it can still be done on it. So testing is continuous. Okay. It doesn't ever end. Every mo You know, when we're younger, we've, when we wake up now, we've stretched, we've done anything. Let me use that example too. But even till tomorrow, when you wake up, you still stretch, stand up, make sure your legs yes. work and all that. So it's continuous, right? It doesn't really, really end. But it's just that when you are just developing, of course, there's a lot of testing going on continuously because you are working on that. So, but for every other product, even if you change from version 1.0 to 2.0 to this one, you keep mm -hmm. testing as you go as you're making that improvement. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. That's what I want to add. All right. Thank okay. Thank you. Allow me for the um, addition. Um, Faith. Please go ahead and please, that would be the last question for tonight. Apologies. So, um, thank Faith, you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, um, just a quick one. And um, please, yesterday on the BA class, I think it was uh, Lady Pat, she spoke about um, if we want to invite someone to join, because I'm registered for the BA class, but I have somebody else that wants to join. So, you said we should, we could get like um, a link to get a discount, something like that. So, how do I get it? So I'm assuming you're talking about the affiliate link. Um, yes, yeah, the to, affiliate link. Yes. To register, to send to your friends to register. Yeah, I have someone that wants to join as well. So how do I get that across? Um, get... I I'm not sure if we captured it during the. I think we did. We captured it during the first training on Tuesday. Um, I can have a look and get back to you on that. If that's okay. Oh, allow Please. me. I want to help out? Please go ahead. 
All right. Um, it was first speaking, right? So what you yes. need to do is register as an affiliate. When you register as an affiliate, then you go and get your own, um, there's a code you have for yourself, like a link to invite somebody else, right? Your own invite link. You have a special code for yourself. When you get there, you know what to do. You can I'm also already registered and like, I've paid already. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. You're registered, but not as an affiliate, right? You're registered okay. as um an intern, right? So you go yeah. back to that page. On your top right, you see where the affiliate link is. Click on it and register as an affiliate. When you register as an affiliate, then you now get your own um, special code for yourself. Then you share with your friend. So when your friend clicks on it and does the need and all that, you will get your own percentage as you will even be seeing it on the screen. Even if you've not redeemed it, like you see your points there, you see the amount you're entitled to, you understand. You see there's very clear, it's a seamless process. You will know what to do. But just like Juliet prescribed, you can go back and also check that uh the video you see what she's talking about there but you okay. can even try it out now even before checking the video go to the affiliate register go back in and check your own code share with your friend your friend will click on the link as long as she has clicked on the link and even if she clicks out again and goes again her link is already your link rather is already connected to her progress right so even if she pays next week for example and you see your own um referral um, amount to yourself very seamless like i said you will know what to do with it can i just clarify so as as an affiliate even even after you sent your link to you know your friends they don't get a discount they don't get a discount so the the rebate comes to you as an affiliate so you only get like i think 10 percent of whatever they paid but the person using your link does not get a discount. So yeah, yes. To clarify. Yeah, just yes. to clarify that. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank yes. you. Um, there's a question on the chat, which will be the final one for tonight. Um, I think allow me. You might need to help with this. So just want to ask, is Blue Sky or Brett Major CPD certified? That's the question. Um, hello, allow me. Well, I'm just going to the kitchen. <laughs> 